Hello, Assalamualaikum and very good afternoon. Hi, how are you? Hi, hi, how are you, Ricky? I'm fine, uh, Prof. Uh, thank you. Thank you for this session. It's a very special session uh, organized by myself today. Okay, so uh, probably some of our viewers uh, in my set Facebook Live uh, are already there, but I'm not pretty sure um, how many of them are viewing. Currently, they are uh, coming in. Uh, hopefully, we will have uh, many of the uh, participants, especially from the um, aviation uh, industry, to join us uh, today. So. Uh, while waiting uh, for the participants to um, join in our our live session today, uh, just to highlight, um, um, probably we it's best to introduce ourselves, eh, Ricky. Okay. Yeah. So uh, uh, to those out there, uh, my name is Abdul Rahim Abu Talib. I'm currently uh, a professor at the Department of Aerospace Engineering, University Putra, Malaysia and also uh, currently the Vice President for the Malaysian Society for Engineering and Technology. And together with me is uh, my co-host, Mr. Ricky Liu. Probably you want to introduce yourself. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Dr. Rahim. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Ricky Liu here. Uh, I'm currently the, uh, I'm, I'm actually a practicing uh, licensed aircraft engineer and I'm currently the head of engineering of SR Aviation. Uh, and in my set, yeah, in my set, Malaysian Society for uh, Engineering and Technology, uh, I'm currently the vice president, uh, one, of, one of the uh, vice presidents and also the chairman of uh, Malaysian uh, Licensed Aircraft uh, uh, Engineers Interest Group. Lah. And uh, through the uh, collaboration with uh, the MySet and also the uh, Association of Malaysia Airlines uh, Licensed Aircraft Engineers, which actually we signed a MOU, uh, we signed an MOU uh, last year, uh, not last year, last month, uh, for the first time ever, for the first time ever, Amale is coming out yeah, from the usual place that they are, you know, within the boundary of uh, Malaysia Airlines, they are coming out and engaging a professional society uh, such as MySet uh, for the betterment and the development of the licensed aircraft engineers. So this is a very good opportunity and uh, thank you Professor uh, Dr. Rahim, you were also instrumental uh, in, in this uh, collaboration. Uh, thank you so much and that's about all from me. Yeah. Okay, thank you Ricky. So, um while uh, waiting for uh, our participants, eh? some of them are already here. Uh, greetings, uh, Ravi Shiva, Uvan Singham, and many others. Okay, uh, good afternoon, and I, we hope that you are all doing well. And if you would like to uh, put your comments uh, or questions, you may do so in the Facebook comments, and we will try our very best. Uh, to highlight it and to pin your comments, uh, the selected comments or questions on the page later on. And uh, just to let you all know that this is our uh, first uh, MySet Tech Talk. Uh, so uh, probably some of you uh, already heard about MySet, but we have uh, not yet having any uh, so-called uh, platform for like a uh, uh, a, a talk show eh? we would like we we, we, we me and uh, Ricky uh, uh, try to um, organize this uh, uh, tech talk so that uh, people outside there especially the community can benefit and get to know what uh, mindset are doing all right and uh, this particular mindset tech talk uh, this is the first uh, session this is ho hopefully the first series of many that will come in the future it is organized by the Malaysian Society for Engineering and Technology. And uh, for today's uh, special session, we are being supported by two organizations, which is uh, AMALE, uh, the Association of Malaysian Airlines Licensed Aircraft Engineer, as just highlighted by uh, my friend Ricky just now. Um, they are also part of this uh, particular session, the reason why we have this, this session. And also, we have uh, our uh, special guest later on we will invite our special guest on board of our live session uh, coming from the department of aerospace engineering university putra malaysia so later on you will uh, see uh, who is our special guest 
and uh, that uh, is the uh, program today eh? uh, the mindset tech talk okay um for today uh, we are going to uh, talk on the academic pathway for LAEs. Eh? Many um, uh, friends, uh, industry uh, um, workers, especially in the aviation industry, are looking forward for to know more about the academic pathway. Of course, you have the, the, your career pathway in um, licensed aircraft engineering. So what we want to introduce today, uh, um, apart from the Career pathway, this is the academic pathway where you can go with your qualifications. Of course, uh, we will also talk on the registration uh, for licensed aircraft engineers with the Board of Engineers Malaysia, that which was recently being announced by the Board of Engineers Malaysia. And we will also uh, talk on a newly launched uh, master program, a master of aerospace system design engineering program by University Putra Malaysia. So before we go into the uh, discussion on uh, our topic today, I would like to ask my co-host uh, T.S. Riki to uh, introduce the My LAE Interest Group by MySet. Pass to you, Riki. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Prof. Okay. Um, MySet uh, my uh, or my licensed aircraft engineers interest group it is actually one of the unit or one of the section under a bigger umbrella society called the malaysian society for engineering and technology yeah and um, after i left ms i left malaysia airlines in uh, 1995 and i was working with uh, eva airways and i worked with klm and then later i came back about 15 years ago uh, to work in subang uh, under the private jet uh, MRO called the SR Aviation. So in the past 20 over years, yeah, what I realized is that uh, the LEEs, uh, many of the uh, very good LEEs, yeah, are actually scattered all around, all around. You know, uh, some are in Air Rod, some are in AAsia, some in Singapore, some in uh, what do you call it, uh, some in other airlines, some in private jet uh, uh, MRO. So what happened is that there is no there is no uh, available of a society for this externally uh, externally that has left the uh, 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 Malaysia Airlines uh, a platform the, the, it was not available it was not available so what happened is that the LEs uh, the LE strength was actually very scattered until until when I joined uh, my set back I think about Six or seven, six or seven years ago, until I joined my set back in the 2014 or 2015, and only after I joined my set did I realize that I have actually missed as a practicing engineer in the industry. I realized that I have actually missed quite a bit, you know, in terms of many things. In terms of recognition, uh, uh, we were we were. Licensed aircraft engineers were always silo outside, you know, we are working on our own. Uh, we don't have a society, you know, we don't have an association uh, outside Malaysia Airlines. Our networking and our interaction is actually with the uh, professional, other professional body are also very limited. We only usually used to keep within our own aviation circle. What is happening in the true aerospace in the nature, civil engineering, mechanical engineering, electrical engineers, we, we, we tend to be disconnected from them, you know, yeah, for many reasons. And also our knowledge, our expertise, our, what do you call it, our aspiration uh, seems to be very restricted because why? We do not have a platform. We do not have a platform, you know, and then the, the continuous professional development and lifelong learning element as a practicing engineer, you know, it is also very limited and restricted other than what we are doing in our daily life as a licensed aircraft engineers and on top of that we we also have limited you know international recognition uh, in a professional body not the authority body yeah. in terms of authority bodies part 66 license for the whole by the licensed aircraft engineers it is well recognized and accepted but i'm talking about professional recognition uh, in the professional body it is not there it is not there so it was very fortunate, yeah, our president, yeah, 
But my said president, engineer Professor Mergat, yeah, last year during our one of our council meeting, after our council meeting last year, he actually shared his uh, advice to me. He said, Ricky, uh, you are the council. I think it is time, you know, for you to actually form a, 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 a group, yeah, a group under my set that looks after, you know, the uh, the interest yeah, of the licensed aircraft engineers so that the Malaysian licensed aircraft engineers, they have an avenue for them to uh, secure their interest, you know, they have an avenue for them to, to contribute back to the society, you know, uh, uh, and make an impact to the to our profession in our profession and because of the advice of the president and uh, with the support of of course uh, also from professor dr rahim under my set we actually form a small group actually our numbers are still very small but it is a section called the malaysian airlines license uh, not malaysia airlines my set license aircraft engineers interest group and it was formed last year it was formed last year now in the past yeah in the past a lot of the uh, because our our lack of exposure in this uh, professional association and society many people many people don't understand the importance you know the importance of affiliating yourself being a member of a learned society especially for a society that is under the huge group of mindset yeah I have seen other other society trying to form itself and it is very challenging you know it takes a lot of resources it takes a lot of time it took it takes a lot of people to actually get involved you have to find avenue you have to have the registration you have to have the approvals and all those so all this actually takes a lot of time so there are some people who attempted to set up association or society after a few years uh, it, it don't even materialize you know and some even died off so why do we want to go through the process when we have a very strong umbrella which is actually my set all we have to do is just form a licensed aircraft engineers interest group uh, under my set or which is already a well-recognized society uh, by the board of engineers you know and because of that yeah because of that i i actually took the uh, took up the responsibility uh per the advice of the uh, our president and we formed this association now there are three reasons why why the malaysian uh mindset licensed aircraft engineers group it is very important to at least like you and me number first number one the very first reason is is for your LEEs personal and professional development it is for you yourself you know because i've been there i know that only after i joined my set i realized how much things i have missed out for the last 20 years you know so this platform my license my, my set license aircraft engineer interest group number one is for your own very personal and professional development number two what is the benefit of it networking networking you know i i used before i joined my set you know i my, my my network of connection is only within my own aviation community yeah very limited very restricted you know and all we talk about is you know about aircraft you know and then uh, technical uh, technicalities about the airplane beyond that yeah beyond what is happening beyond other field of engineering i i literally have no knowledge at all when we when the industrial industrial revolution 4.0 came out yeah when i asked a lot of the uh, licensed aircraft engineers they 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 do not know what is industrial uh, industrial revolution 4.0 but how do i get the information it is because through my set some of the activities some of the people that i network so the number two benefits of having an association joining association like my licensed aircraft engineers group my lee is networking number three is standardization yeah standardizations means through the platform of my lee and my set you have the opportunity to be engaged you know by certain very important body for example engagement with the board of engineers through my set as the platform where 
you and me, yeah, can make an impact, can steer that the direction how our future LAEs or engineering profession, how it should actually move towards. Are we on the right track? Did we meet the international standards and international regulatory requirements so that we are recognized, you know, beyond more than just a, 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 a daily certification of aircraft only? So these are the three main reasons, per prof personal and professional development. Number two, networking. And then number three, uh, standardization. Now, I give you a very good example, yeah? The licensed aircraft engineers, yeah? Uh, has been has always wanted to get themselves registered with the board of engineers to be recognized by the board of engineers for many many years as far as i know since the formation of nine uh, malaysian airlines 1972 we already the licensed aircraft engineers has already started to work on this uh, 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 recognition you know or acceptance of our license as for the licensed aircraft engineers to be registered with the board of engineers but it didn't work, you know, it didn't really work until, until a group, yeah, a group of very kind people and um, probably uh, what they call it, uh, Prof, uh, Professor Dr. Rai will share a little bit afterwards, until this group of people start to sit down and discuss about it, you know, and go through in detail. We spent a lot of time, a lot of debate, you know, only then eventually we actually got that, uh, that kind of recognition, you know. Now, if you have, if this did not happen, yeah, if this, if not because of mindset, not be, if it's not because of the learner society such as mindset, today you and me, you and me are still not recognized by the regulatory, regulatory engineering body. Now, you see how important us as a licensed aircraft engineers, if we want to grow our profession, if we want to actually network, uh, expand our profession, then you will realize that you have to find a platform that is very well connected. And this is actually what is happened in actually uh, 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 in Malaysia's mindset. Yeah, mindset. Now there are also other things that I would like to uh, I would like to actually share with you. Number one, um, we at least always like to say that oh we are professionals, we are professionals. Licensed aircraft engineers are professionals. But I always ask ourselves, ask ourselves, what do you? How do you define professional? How do you define professional? You do we self declare as professional, or do we know what are the requirements to be classified as professional? Do we know? I can tell you, I don't know, because at the last time I also thought, you know, that once I become an LE, I become a professional. Actually, licensed aircraft engineer they are very good in aircraft uh, maintenance of the aircraft and systems of the aircraft. They are expert. For sure, I can guarantee they are for sure, they are expert. But when you comes to professional, the definition of professional is more than just nut and bolts on the aircraft, you know? You are talking about, do you have the leadership of a professional? Do you have the mentoring, you know, resources that people can guide you, professional people, not expert, eh? professional people to guide you? You know, is there a subject matter expert where you can actually sit down and discuss and talk about? Do you have career planning? Have you been assessed? Have you been examined, you know, from the perspective of leadership, from the perspective of continuous professional development, from the perspective of your code of conduct, code of practices? All these have to be, have to be included if you want to call yourself professional. Not just uh, because I got license, I, I can sign off airplane. That is, uh, I'm a professional. No, 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 not, not yet. Not yet. We are only expert. If you want to go to professionals, you have to go through certain certification through the regulatory body supported by, supported by a learner society like MySet, like MySet. So actually it is, uh, it is a lot of, uh, uh, um, long uh, uh what they collect a lot of very huge benefits 
if we are a member of a learner society, and especially for Ellie, is somebody who can take care and look after the interests of licensed aircraft engineer, which is actually um, my LAE, yeah, in the mindset. So at least, at least through this session today, I'm very thankful that uh, my set yeah has actually launched uh, this inaugural uh, this inaugural TED talk yeah to allow yeah to become a platform for the engagement with the practitioners of the industry you know and just for your information licensed aircraft engineer always took the lead you know and, and it is the first session for the licensed aircraft engineers and the next session we also have a, a other session in the future for other technical expertise from other places as well you know other avenues as well so i think that roughly give every one of us a brief idea not just be an expert as a licensed aircraft engineer join a, a, a learner society like mindset have park yourself park yourself inside the licensed aircraft engineers interest group and together collectively with a very strong team of us we can actually steer the whole profession in in the engineering field for the benefit of the licensed aircraft engineers for the benefit of the engineering fraternity as also for the benefit of our nation for the malaysian what we say what we what we participate and what we do have a very very strong impact in the future of the engineering and the profession yeah so i hope you all can see the uh, goodness uh, the goodness of uh, joining a, a society probably i can i can continue and talk and talk and talk lah. but i think uh, it is best that i also pass the time give time to uh, professor dr rahim because he is also instrumental yeah he is also instrumental uh, in actually bringing the aviation and the aerospace industry up and actually that also have benefited the licensed aircraft engineers yeah and uh, thank you prof over back to you thank you prof okay thank you very much uh yes ricky eh, for the uh introduction to my lae uh, interest group at malaysian society for engineering and technology so uh Yes, Ricky has been uh, instrumented the uh, interest group at my set. So, uh, especially for um, the LAEs community. So, those LAEs who are out there, you have already seen and uh, heard the benefits of uh, um, involving eh, your um, your uh, um, involvement with my LAE. So, there's a lot of things being highlighted just now, and among others are about the career progression, personal development, you can have networking and also standardization. So um, later, if you have any question about my LAE interest group, uh, you may want to uh, highlight it in the comments. And uh, for to continue with our uh, tech talk, as I highlighted in our agenda early, uh, that I'm going to touch on the registration of LAEs, eh, Licensed Aircraft Engineers, with the Board of Engineers Malaysia. So T.S. Ricky has already highlighted uh, earlier that the Board of Engineers Malaysia has already recognized the profession, recognized the uh, certification given by the Civil Aviation Authority of Malaysia. So I just want to mention about a brief history of what's going on and eh? who are the people, who, who are the, uh, which organization instrumented uh, the initiative of course uh, it's being highlighted by uh, ts vicky just now um, in the um, malaysian uh, airline um, uh, society uh, the um, uh, association for uh, malaysian airline licensed aircraft engineers uh, all of you have have already tried to um, fought at, or tried to bring up the ideas of getting recognition for laes um, as one of the engineering profession recognized by, by the Board of Engineers Malaysia. So um, with respect to that, uh, Malaysian Society for Engineering and Technology, MISET, um, in year 2016, has proposed to the Board of Engineers Malaysia that um, the uh, licensed aircraft engineers community, the, the certification um, provided by CAAM, is as 
substantial equivalent eh, to the academic program accredited by the Board of Engineers Malaysia. So there is an initiative uh, by my set and being brought to BEM and there's a delegation eh, from Board of Engineers Malaysia went to see uh, DCA at that particular point um, and um, getting an agreement, discussion, early discussion and we uh, started to conduct the equivalency study. Yeah, so, um, of course, the equivalency study, there's a long uh, story about it. You can read uh, our article, my article and uh, T.S. Ricky article in the Bulletin uh, Engineer eh, the, uh, by the Board of Engineers Measure. It can be easily downloaded and you can read the whole story, what, what, how the equivalency study being conducted. So, in summary, um, through this uh, equivalency study, the Board of Engineers Malaysia in 2018 has already recognized the uh, certification provided by CAM, especially for the category B without type rating to be equivalent to um, engineering technician, uh, meaning that uh, equivalent to a diploma in engineering or engineering technology, meaning that those having uh, uh, certification by CAM category B uh, without type rating, you can register yourself as engineering technician with the Board of Engineers Malaysia. And then those who are having category B with type rating can register yourself as engineering technologies. Meanwhile, for those who are having category C uh, licensed by CAAM uh, can register yourself as a graduate engineer. What are the impact and eh? what, what what are the benefits of registration with the Board of Engineers Malaysia by getting this recognition it is opening the academic pathway because the category C has been equated to an engineering degree eh? people who are uh, not really know what's going on they said how come uh, a graduate engineer being equated to a licensed uh, aircraft engineer category C and this this practice has been um, implemented by uh, the EC UK uh, in engineering council UK where category C aircraft uh, engineer uh, licensed aircraft engineer uh, can get uh, a chartered engineer it is equivalent to a graduate in, in graduate engineer so similarly with that uh, uh, throughout the study that we made uh, the Board of Engineers Measure has finally recognized and uh, now uh, with the uh, recognition uh, given by the Board of Engineers Measure, that's where the academic pathway comes in. Eh? So this is where we have our special guest for today um, that we would like to bring into the uh, our platform, um, uh, Mindset Tech Talk. Um, I would like to uh, welcome um, Dr. Muhammad Faisal Abdul Hamid, uh, who's, who is a senior lecturer at the Department of Aerospace Engineering and currently he is the coordinator for the Master of Aerospace System Design Engineering at uh, UPM. So uh, probably it's best for Dr. Faisal to talk about uh, what is actually the master program all about. So, pass to you, Dr. Faisal. Okay, thank you, Prof. Rahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Okay. Uh, my name is Dr. Faisal. Uh, okay. Uh, normally, people call me just Faisal. Okay. Uh, the main element that lead to the formation of this program is the direction of Malaysia in the field of aerospace engineering as outlined in the Malaysian Aerospace uh, Industry Blueprint 2030 by the Aerospace uh, Council, Malaysia. And uh, basically, uh, Malaysia is aiming to increase the country world market shares uh, uh, up to 3.5% by year 2030. And that will uh, equate to nearly about 2 billion for our national gross income. And also will, that will uh, create uh, about 10,000 more jobs by 2030. Okay, and uh, this particular program, uh, what uh, the the goal of this particular program is basically 
we want to have uh, advancement in the knowledge, of course, and the skills and ability to, to deal with the complex problem. And then uh, we would like to have uh, uh, to be more competitive, to lead the aerospace system uh, design, and then uh, to be more proficient in the uh, uh, project management, technical leadership, and lastly, to be more creative and innovative and responsible uh, to the uh, what's going on in the development of aerospace, uh, in particular in Malaysia. Okay, back to uh, Prof Rahim. Okay, uh, thank you, Faisal. So, so basically, the introduction of the Master of Aerospace uh, Engineering, uh, sorry, Master of Aerospace System Engineering Design. Eh? Maybe, maybe uh, some people would like to know more about about this uh, master program. Why suddenly UPM introduced this particular course? Is it just uh, uh, thinking about it and then suddenly offer it? And 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 why yeah. why now? Why why this program? And who are the target student? Maybe Dr. Faisal can uh, explain a little bit on this. Okay, I just touch on the bit uh, history about this program. This part program uh, was first uh, discussed at our department level in 2015 and then we put forward a concept paper and we have a discussion with uh, what we call the JKPP, our uh, advisor for our program that was uh, in somewhere in 2019. Then later on, uh, we move forward and we uh, basically drafted uh, beautifully the, the, the whole structure of the program uh, then uh, uh, and then we we go into uh, one step after another and then we uh, proceed to get the approval from KPT and so on and basically uh, the program is uh, uh, probably some of you would like to know why we 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 uh, we have uh, we offer this program right basically we want to help to improve the national agriculture field as you know upm the niche area is agriculture as well as we want to support the national aerospace direction okay as i mentioned earlier about the uh, aerospace blueprint 2030 and to to uh, bring in more uh, industry skill manpower and uh, to meet the uh, higher education uh, market in the future and also to respond to the what we uh, normally call uh, IR 4.0, the industrial revolution, so that uh, the the whole package here basically to enhance our uh, aerospace uh, 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 development in Malaysia. And this particular program is basically our aim is to uh, provide the opportunity uh, for those who have a uh, degree and also for those who have uh, uh, category B1 or B2 license or even category C to uh, to get uh, themselves registered with the BM as a graduate engineer or engineering technologist and then they can uh, pursue into this particular program and to get uh, to know to get the more uh, in particular, the design skills, okay, the design skills needed. Uh, of course, uh, as mentioned by T.S. Ricky just now, that, uh, for example, the, the, from the LAEs, they are already experts, and now it is one of the element that uh, could uh, uh, add to, to uh, basically add into this uh, 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 human development basically to to be more uh, uh, more uh, in term of the knowledge and of course the skill is there already but to gain more knowledge uh, from from the perspective of the uh, design uh, aspect okay back to the prof rahim Okay, uh, before we go into the next question, uh, maybe Dr. Faisal would like to uh, answer the question from Iswadi Ismail. Uh, this is a very relevant question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, is this program has been accredited? Yeah. So, who accredited the program and what is the status now? Maybe Dr. Faisal has okay. to explain uh, it. 
Okay, about this uh, aggregation pro process, uh, probably some of you know about it, but probably majority not really uh, aware of this. Uh, the thing is, uh, uh, this particular program already got the approval from the uh, High, uh, Ministry of Higher Education in uh, May, early May 2021, uh, and this particular program was uh, 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 allowed or basically can run the first intake in October 2021. And uh, this particular program, basically, we have uh, uh, gone through this, uh, what call it, uh, SWA aggregacy or self aggregation uh, like UPM. We are uh, one of the university, not only UPM, uh, we have uh, other university as well, but UPM is also one of the uh, university that have the uh, capacity to 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 do this uh, SWA aggregation process, and uh, this particular program uh, uh, will be um, uh, get the full aggregation when the the first uh, graduation is uh, complete their their uh, this this particular program. So that is the the process. Okay, it's just a process. So the 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 uh uh the to get this uh mqa uh done uh that is a certain process that's up to the uh, uh the first intake that uh graduate so i think Prof. Rahim, you can uh, add a little bit more about this okay okay thank you faisal maybe i just uh, want to uh, strengthen in terms of the explanation there so uh, as mentioned by uh, Faisal, Dr. Faisal just now, the program has already uh, gone through what we call it as the provision uh, accreditation. It is a self-accreditation by UPM because UPM is one of the eight university awarded self-accreditation by the Malaysian Qualification uh, Agency. Eh? So uh, upon receiving the provisions, provisionary status, uh, uh, the program has to be, can be conducted Okay, can be conducted and then uh, upon um, uh, receiving the first batch of uh, student the program will go will go through another assessment there will be um, uh, people from 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 uh, third party uh, normally from representative from mqa or the uh, uh, center for quality assurance in upm will vet through the program and will award the program uh, to be fully accredited and then you will see the uh, accreditation uh, approval number, number in MQF. Eh? So, uh, sorry, MQR, Nation Qualification Register. So, uh, of course, it, take, it, take, it takes time for the numbers to be appear in the register because it depends on uh, MQA. Yeah? So, but uh, don't worry, the program has already received its provisionally provision uh, accreditation and uh, already approved by the Senate of UPM and also the Ministry of Higher Education education so uh, maybe the next question uh, of course uh, we would like to know more uh, about the program maybe dr faisal can highlight us uh, what is actually the student going to learn um, because uh, many of them uh, especially today they are already laes you highlight about design just now and the program is about aerospace system design maybe you want to tell us a little bit more on the courses that they, the student going to to take okay uh thank you okay uh, we start with the uh, we have uh, several module the first one is the core module there are six credit hours that means uh, two uh, subjects for that one and then we have uh, a core module uh, inside this core module we have uh, two parts which the first one is the core courses uh, that uh, accumulate to 18 credit hours and the second part is the uh, elective courses six credit hours and the last one is uh, what we call it a uh, dissertation model where the student will be uh, uh, the student need to do a certain uh, project design project okay that uh, total of six sorry uh, 10 credit hours and all together what we have is uh, 40 credit hours and uh, in terms of the uh, cost structure okay in the first semester 
we will uh, the student will be uh, exposed to what called a research methodology subject okay then uh, aerospace quality and project management then aircraft flight performance okay probably you would like to know about this uh, aircraft flight performance aircraft flight performance that we are going to look into is the uh, both uh, the fixed wing as well as the rotary wing, rotary wing aircraft okay both the helicopter and the uh, uh, conventional aircraft and then uh, we will also uh, have a subject called uh, guidance navigation and control gnc and then last one is the aircraft propulsion and that is all in the first semester so we have uh, five uh, uh, subjects to be offered in the first semester uh, in this uh, coming october and then on the second semester which uh, on the sometimes in the uh, uh, march okay uh, second semester we we will have uh, aerospace structures aircraft system design and integration and then we also have aircraft design lab okay this is a little bit interesting uh, okay that uh, uh, a part of the theory part you will you, you will have a uh, opportunity to to do some uh, hands-on uh, project with uh, in a group it is a group project yeah? so this in this particular project uh, you probably will be exposed to to the to uh, develop your own uh, small UAVs, some sort of something like that. Okay, and then the student will take the uh, what we call elective uh, subject and also will start the uh, dissertation, the first uh, part of their dissertation, dissertation in uh, second semester. And on the last semester, uh, the student uh, will need to register for the elective, uh, second elective courses and also to complete the uh, dissertation the, the second part of the dissertation that what we will have in that uh, uh, sequence that is if the student would like to uh, finish the program within three semesters okay if the student would like to finish everything within three semesters but if the student would like to uh, because some of the student or the majority of the student have uh, other commitment working right so you have a very limited time to spend on this particular program and therefore you can uh, 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 plan ahead what are the subject that you want to take in the first semester in the second semester and so on so that part uh, you you need to contact uh, uh, myself or other lecturer who teaching this particular program so that you can get a proper uh, guidance in term of planning okay because uh, you need to know that uh, the the courses that offered in the first semester will not be offered in the second semester okay uh, is uh, one particular uh, courses will be offered once in a year okay and speaking about the elective courses there are uh, cfd computational fluid dynamics uh, finite element analysis, aerospace composite, avionics, design optimization uh, techniques, space mission and uh, engineering, uh, system engineering. Uh, that is what we have so far. And uh, yeah, uh, is there any uh, question so that I can uh, straight away answer? Okay. Uh Dr. Faisal, there's a one question from uh, Eugene. Eh? Uh, he mm -hmm. is an engineer serving in the Royal Malaysian yeah, Air Force. Yeah. And he would like to know what is the difference between this particular program with the conventional Master of Aerospace Engineering by research. Okay. Yeah. And okay. how this program will help in the future career. Okay. Uh, thank you for your question. Okay, in the UPM, uh, we offer both uh, programs, a master taught course or master by coursework, what we call it, and also master by research. If you are going to uh, master by research, uh, basically, uh, you only need to uh, register for two subjects, uh, if I'm not mistaken, two or three subjects throughout your, your studies. And uh, that particular uh, 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 
uh, focus or that particular program is basically um, you will do a lot of uh, what we call it uh, uh, research. Your research is really, really uh, uh, a big thing. Okay. Whereas when you proceed with the uh, master by top course, uh, uh, most of the uh, things or what are the things that we, you will do from day to day is basically uh, attending class, just like uh, the uh, undergraduate uh, program. Okay. For those who, who are not really uh, uh, aware of this arrangement of this master by coursework. And uh, towards the end of this program, you will need to uh, do uh, a particular project. Okay. Uh, and then that particular project is uh, basically will uh, need yourself to, to do some certain uh, design analysis. And of course, you need to get yourself exposed with the uh, a lot of uh, 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 tools like the programming, uh, the design, uh, CAE, like the CFD or final element and so on. So that is uh, what I can uh, share uh, from my perspective. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh other question uh, is on the fees, of course. Um, okay. And uh, maybe Dr. Faisal also can highlight how the classes being conducted. Eh? Is, is okay. there any difference between full time and part time? Okay, I will. I will answer that one first. Okay. okay. Then I will. I will talk about the fees. Okay. Uh, classes. Uh, we already got the approval from the Ministry of Higher Education to run this program. Uh, it uh, in two modes basically full-time and also part-time. So uh, in full-time mode, uh, the the semester is between three to six semesters or, or up to three years. Uh, for the part-time, it is uh, between four to eight semesters and uh, that's equate to about uh, four years okay, in total. So if you register with uh, as a part-time or full-time, uh, you will be in the same class regardless uh, your status as a part-time or full-time student. Okay? You will be in the same class. And uh, uh, the arrangement of the classes will be between uh, on the Monday until Friday. Okay. So uh, since uh, as you can see just now, we're offering five uh, subjects uh, in one semester. And therefore, uh, from Monday to Friday, we have five days. So uh, most likely every day we will have classes and that particular classes will be uh, from uh, 6 p.m. until 9 p.m. It is out of the office hours. Okay. However, on certain arrangement, for example, like during the uh, Ramadan month, uh, the arrangement of the classes, might, uh, we might uh, push it to uh, Saturday and Sunday during the day. I, I hope you understand on the, the arrangement of the classes. So the arrangement of the classes is uh, one subject per day. And uh, that was uh, uh, between Monday to Friday. That, that is common what we are uh, offering in our uh, faculty. Not only for this particular program, but we also have uh, another, I think another 10 more programs in our faculty, if I'm not mistaken. So this is a uh, sort of arrangement that we have so far. Okay, the next one about the fees. Okay, for I just uh, talk about the local student. Eh? Okay, for the local students, uh, the total is uh, about eighteen hundred uh, plus plus. Okay, uh, for now, what is being uh, calculated is eighteen hundred, eighteen eighteen thousand three hundred and fifty. Sorry, so. Uh, for the first semester, uh, we 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 split into this. Uh, the the calculation of the fees is basically each semester there are two parts, two components. The first one is the uh, the basic uh, university charges or fees. Okay, on the first semester, that one is one thousand three hundred and fifty. And on the following semester, which means on the second semester, third, fourth, so forth, so. In the uh, second semester onwards, uh, the basic uh, fees 
is uh, 1,100. Okay, that is for the basic fees. Okay, now the second part is the uh, credit fees, fees per credit. So fees per credit is 370 per credit hours. If let's say uh, you uh, register for uh, uh, five uh, subject in the first semester, okay, but in the first semester you register for five, five uh, subject. So five, uh, uh, five subject you need to multiply by three because each of the subjects uh, carries three credits. So in total you have 15 credits. So that 15 credits you need to multiply by 370. Okay, that will uh, uh, equate to 5,550. And uh, if you include the, the first semester basic fees, uh, the total for the first semester is 6,900, okay? And in the second semester, if you follow the, the cost structure that we have provided, the second semester, the total is 6,650 and the last semester is about uh, nearly 5,000, 4,800, okay? That is the fee structure for the local student, okay? Thank you. Doctor mentioned, okay, the next question. Yes. Uh, sorry, uh, I mute, yeah. muted myself. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. There's a question on UAV hands-on project. Eh? Uh, does yeah. that mean students have to be in Malaysia throughout the program? Uh, maybe our friend here, Zach, Zach B. Lim, is uh, working uh -huh. outside Malaysia maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in terms of the arrangement, uh, this particular... Uh, arrangement uh, that will appear basically uh, most probably yeah, in, uh, in the next semester and uh, I believe at that particular time the condition the condition will get better from what we have uh, currently with the COVID-19. I hope uh, at that particular time uh, most of the class will be uh, we are allowed to do face-to-face uh, -face classes okay and okay speaking about this uh, 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 lab work i would call it okay lab work basically you will be uh uh you will be tasked okay you you will uh need to come up with certain design of uh, a small drone this is just an example eh? okay the, the arrangement of that specific uh project might differ from student to student or from group to group okay so basically, uh, your question is: uh, Do you basically what what I can uh, I can get from your question is uh, how about yourself? Uh, because you are not physically in Malaysia, right? So uh, I don't think that is a big uh, problem. Uh, I think that is a just a challenge for us, okay, for you and uh, for us uh, as uh, the lecturers here in in, in Malaysia. Uh, the arrangement of the uh, classes we can do uh, uh, in that in that sense i think we can uh, make it uh, online and we can uh, evaluate uh, from uh, uh, through online uh, we can have a certain guideline certain rubrics to to do the assessment process as well as to uh, uh, get yourself uh, 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 to equip yourself uh, on what to do uh, during the, the whole uh, uh, process. Okay, I think uh, probably Dr. Prof. Rahim can add a little bit more on this uh, question. Okay, uh, with regards to the um, um, online, uh, of course, uh, currently everything is being conducted online and for the hands-on project, probably we can devise uh, certain certain. Uh, uh, things as mentioned by Dr. Faisal, it is uh, not a problem; it's a challenge. Eh? So we will try to find ways on uh, how are we going to go about in terms of the uh, laboratory activity. I think there's only one course uh, require uh, hands-on activity. So um, there's a question on uh, minimum qualification from uh, Associate Professor Dr. Khairul Dahri. Okay. Okay. Yes. Uh... Minimum qualification. I just uh, read through the admission requirement 
from okay. the Senate of UPM. <laughs> okay, there is a long list. Okay, basically, uh, the first one, a bachelor degree or equivalent in engineering or engineering technology with a minimum CGPA of 2.750 or bachelor degree or equivalent in engineering or engineering technology with CGPA of 2.5 to 2.5. 749 uh, and must have a minimum of three years of work experience in a related field or bachelor degree or equivalent in engineering or engineering technologies with uh, CGPA of 2.250 to 2.449 and must have a minimum of five years work uh, experience in a related field and the same uh, so goes to the uh, uh, bachelor of uh, in science and technology. Of course, uh, the requirement is a bit higher lah. for the bachelor of uh, uh, science and technology. CGPA is uh, starting from uh, 3.0. Okay, and also uh, the, the next is uh, with uh, experience three years and five years on. Okay, I think I, I don't have to go through this very specifically. That it is already in the brochure. You can can refer to that. Yes. So apart apart from the normal yeah. uh, academic uh, qualifications, eh, uh, it's being uh, approved by the Senate of UPM that equivalent qualifications approved by the uh, government of Malaysia that includes the registration of LAEs with BEM. Eh? So that's why um, uh, uh, TS Vicky highlighted very important that uh, all of you to get uh, yourself registered. Uh, with a board of engineers that is part of the benefits meaning that your uh, certification uh, now being recognized by board of engineers Malaysia and from there UPM Senate has already um, approved in terms of the equivalency so because of our, our we, we believe in uh, the equivalency um, study that already being conducted by board of engineers Malaysia and uh, you can get enrolled in the program eh? Uh, with regard to MBA, maybe TS Ricky has some answer uh, with regard to uh, MBA. Why people with MBA uh, shouldn't uh, go into this program, should go for PhD. Uh, maybe any advice on that, Ricky? Uh, okay, uh, this is very much on my personal perspective. Yeah. So if you talk about MBA, or <clears throat> you're talking more towards the, uh, the management perspective, Whereas uh, the master, the master is very much on technical perspective. So people have a choice whether you want to sharpen your skills, your technical skills into engineering, uh, then you should go for your uh, uh, master, you know, in engineering, aerospace uh, system design. But if you are a person who felt that, you know, you think, you felt that you need to enhance your management skill, yeah, management skills, and you already have your MBA, and probably you want to do some research on the, probably um, uh, quality management, you know. Perhaps in, in that aspect, you can go for the PhD in, uh, in uh, quality management, you know. Uh, but I personally feel that uh, if we want to stay uh, uh, technical and sharpen our technical skills, then probably I would actually personally would consider uh, taking up the, the second master, which is actually the master in aerospace system uh, design engineering. So it, it's very much what you want to do in your career uh, and also depends very much uh, on your uh, interest where you want to be. Like for me, uh, I, I already hold an MBA uh, uh, too and I also felt that, you know, this this master degree in uh, aerospace system design engineering, uh, it actually triggers my interest. Yeah, it triggers my interest that I actually, you know, maybe if um, I have the time, you know, I would like to actually sharpen my knowledge or increase my knowledge inside this uh, the subjects uh, that is offered by a master. So I believe it is uh, up to the individual choice where you want to be, whether you want to be enhance yourself to technical or you want to enhance yourself, improve yourself more towards management. So you have to make uh, your own uh, choice, yeah? What you plan in your future career. Yeah, thank you, uh, Prof, for asking. Okay, uh, there's uh, one question from Ravi, eh? um, asking about how about BEM standpoint of view on this program? 
probably I just uh, try to highlight it. Uh, not representing BEM, uh, but uh, if uh, the question actually should be uh, addressed to BEM representative. Eh? But uh, of course, uh, with, re with, with regards to the uh, program offered by institution of higher learning, right? So BEM normally uh, is the, actually they do not interfere eh, with the programs that are being offered by any institution of higher learning, even though it is a, an engineering program, unless the program need to be accredited by Board of Engineers Malaysia, either through Engineering Accreditation Council, currently meant for Bachelor of Engineering programs, as well as the Engineering Technology Accreditation Council, which they look after Bachelor of Engineering Technology program, as well as diploma engineering and diploma engineering technology program so at the master level board of engineers measure basically they do not uh, interfere with the running of the program so probably some of you are asking whether the uh, program also can be uh, considered for uh, non uh, what we call it is the non-recognized uh, unrecognized degree yeah? that's another uh, story maybe we can have uh, another session talking about the a uh, non-recognized engineering program but in short the two years uh, master oh, sorry the uh, uh, one and a half years master uh, of aerospace system design uh, sorry system design engineering program offered by UPM can be considered as a top up program and probably some of you have already aware that uh, board of engineers measure has recently put up a circular eh? um, any uh, student that enroll in uh, the thought course program, master thought course program, uh, by 31st of December, they can still use the master program as a top up. But any program uh, uh, being enrolled after 31st December 2021 cannot be uh, used as a top up program. They have to go through what we call it as the Board of Engineers. Uh, Malaysia Graduate Assessment Program, so BEM GET program. So you can get more details uh, from the BEM website. I think there's a, a very recent circular and for those who are looking for a uh, top-up program for your bachelor degree that is not recognized by Board of Engineers Malaysia, you may want to refer to the website of Board of Engineers Malaysia. And I just want to say that this program offered by UPM can be considered as a Pak program for aerospace related programs. Eh? So, any other information probably you want to share by by uh, Dr. Faisal with regard to this? Um, I think we have another question there. Uh, so, if we have unrecognized degree, also again another unrecognized degree, then we take this program. Is there any guarantee? Eh? Of course, as I uh, given uh, the. Um, uh, remarks just now we do not guarantee of course you need to ask BEM and I said uh, we we cannot guarantee any, anything that the program uh, your, your uh, top up program uh, through this pro this must day program is being uh, accepted by BEM but just uh, to say that the program itself fulfill the requirements eh? and remember you have to enroll by 31st December Beyond that, you have to take the two years uh, graduate assessment program that going to be launched in January. So no more master top up program. So a bit unfortunate eh? uh, for those uh, unrecognized degree for whatever reason. Uh, you may refer. My advice is refer to BEM. Okay. Uh, so that's my uh, my short answer to this. Okay, uh, Dr. Faisal, any additional information you want to add on? Because I think I believe we have already gone through quite a lot. Unless there are questions that I miss out. Any any question related to uh, LAE registration? You may ask here. You um, also can ask about the my LAEs uh, interest group eh, that already being explained by uh, TS Riki, right? Uh, just would like to add, uh, Prof Rahim, that uh, this particular program with the, uh, uh, we, we have a MOU, UPM have a MOU with uh, uh, MAS, uh, MAB, Malaysia at Lambright. And then we, uh, the student will have the opportunity later on 
okay some student uh, not i think not all will have the opportunity to be uh, to be uh, uh, at uh, uh, mab facility to, to get their to get data and uh, of course that that can uh, also be used for their dissertation project later on towards the end of this uh, uh, master program for the dissertation okay okay there's a question on the intake uh, when will be the intake uh, the first intake will be this coming october 2021 that our first intake and uh, the deadline for local students to get yourself a register with the program is by the end of this uh, month okay before 30th of uh, july okay uh, thank you dr faisal and also question from ts ramesh eh? uh, mm. is this program one one off or there will be future intake is it just uh, yeah, yeah. October <laughs> or there will be just that's 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 it <laughs> yeah okay this program will be uh, you you can get enrolled into this program uh, basically twice a year lah. we will have uh, two intakes uh, in, in either in the first semester normally either in september or october and the the, the second semester where uh, normally at uh, um february or march okay that that is uh, what we consider as second second intake lah, second semester but no problem you can either register yourself uh, in this coming october or the next uh, semester and it is not just it is not a one off program okay okay and uh, probably just before we end our session as highlighted by dr faisal just now uh, we had an mou with uh, malaysian airline headed by uh, the team by dr umran eh? Uh, yeah. probably he's uh, listening or uh, he's somewhere there uh, but we do uh, get a very good feedback from the Malaysian airline team especially from the uh, uh, the engineering team as well as the Amale eh? uh, thank you very much for the support from uh, Amale uh, members as well as the president so we uh, hope that uh, the program uh, can be used um, as um, um a place for all of you to progress your academic academic pathway whether you want to use it as um uh, additional certification some people would like to collect um, a degree certificate master phd but some of you would like to to seek further knowledge to strengthen knowledge as highlighted by ts ricky and probably uh, through this uh, master program you gain uh, a lot of uh, networking and, and 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 so on and so forth there's so many benefits it is a continuous learning eh? so uh, with that uh, probably i pass to ts ricky to um, highlight a little bit in terms of the concluding remarks uh, if you have okay uh, thank you very much uh, dr faisal and uh, professor uh, dr rahim yeah um, I know that there's a lot of uh, fellow engineers who have uh, actually uh, logged in uh, to look into, uh, to consider uh, this program. And I, I would strongly uh, suggest, yeah, I would strongly suggest that LEEs, yeah, to capitalize on this opportunity. Number one, it, it actually has a weekend mode. Most of us are working, you know, and this weekend mode is actually very convenient, yeah, uh, to most of us. Uh, to actually uh, come and attend the class, number one, yeah. Number two, it is local. It is local in the you know in the vicinity of uh, uh, Lembah Kelang, and uh, UPM is there, and uh, we have already have uh, uh, standing by you know on uh, to meet the challenges if we don't have the the, uh, the ability to meet face to face, you know they are probably considering our online and all those. So this is the second opportunity. Number three, number three is that. Do you know that to take a Master's of Aerospace System Design Engineering in overseas is very expensive? It's very expensive. Number two, does it meet the requirements of Board of Engineers? We wouldn't know. We really wouldn't know. But as far as this program is concerned, you know, it is reasonably priced. And then uh, for those who have, uh, what do you call it? 
uh, EP, uh, not the uh, EPF account, you can actually consider using that the the savings in the in the uh, UPF account to actually withdraw and and actually subsidize or, or pay for your fees. All these are all kinds of uh, uh, convenience that is provided to you. You know, uh, if we do the program here, so I would advise uh, all engineers, yeah, licensed aircraft engineers, uh, to uh, capitalize on uh, uh, the opportunity offered on this program. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much that I that, that that's all I have, uh, uh, Dr. Faisal and uh, Dr. Uh, Rahim. Yeah. Okay. Before we end, there's another two question we have to entertain. Maybe uh, still we have some time there. Uh, with regard to uh, minimum uh, numbers of credit, maybe I can just answer that quickly. Uh, for UPM, the minimum credits are basically are six. You have to register minimum six credit for post credit program. So in, 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 two in other words, two subjects. Eh? So you can have uh, two subjects. Of course, if you only register two subjects per semester, you will have how many semester, Faisal? <laughs> 15 <laughs> semester maybe. Uh, eh? so the no, the longer time it will take. Five, five, five semesters. Uh, sorry, five, five. semesters. Eh? So two, two subjects, six. Eh? Six, okay. Mm -hmm. Right, so uh, you if the, 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 the minimum you take, the longer period that you will uh, stay with UPM, maybe you need, uh, you, you need some uh, extra time. Is, uh, it is acceptable. Uh, maximum duration is how many years, Dr. Faisal? Okay, uh, for full time, uh, you have up until three years or six semesters. So if you take uh, two subjects per semester, that will be at even extra one semester left if you okay. get no worries <laughs> <laughs> all right and maybe this is the last uh, comment or question uh, of course in the brochure doesn't mention aircraft maintenance license but there is a statement about equivalent eh? equivalent yeah. Yeah. yes equivalent. equivalent so for more information you can uh, email the contact person in the uh, brochure, uh, brochure which is um, our secretariat eh? uh, of course Dr Faisal email I, I don't know whether it's there or not yeah yeah my email there <laughs> okay email Dr Faisal brochure, yeah he's so open for you can email Q &A. directly to me yes yeah. uh, when we finish our tech talk you can still communicate with him to know more and maybe you have some other question so um, I believe that would uh, wrap up our session today and as uh, being highlighted, I would, we would like on behalf of my set Malaysian Society for Engineering Technology we um, uh, gather me and uh, T.S. Riki as the host and our guest speaker Dr. Faisal thank everybody who participated in our session very fruitful uh, remarks questions of course it's not that really comprehensive maybe you need uh, uh, feel, uh, direct communication feel free to contact the program coordinator Dr. Faisal with regard to um, aerospace system de de design engineering program or you have any question or you would like to join in my LAE interest group you are most welcome even though you are not LAE you um you can you can enter right Ricky? Uh, yeah 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 yes yeah, yeah. Oh, come so you, you can also join in if you are a student you can become a student members yeah. only 10 ringgit uh, to become a student members uh, for my set and uh, there are a lot of other benefits so with that uh, thank you very much stay safe everybody and uh, till we meet again in the next series just to have a teaser the next series will talk on certificate of competency on marine engineering so marine engineering is another uh, equivalent study that being conducted by my set eh? so on behalf of board of engineers malaysia so we have uh, managed to uh, get the coc marine engineering class 4 class 2 and class 1 to be registered as uh, registered person in the board of engineers Malaysia. so many things that can be done by the involvement of uh, members so join my set if you would like to involve in many other uh, study being conducted by uh, board of engineers Malaysia. with that thank you very much uh, assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh bye 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 bye